What up, YouTube? Jade up here, and welcome back to my channel. So, today, allegedly, I'm going over my buddy Ryan's, and we're going to put the Arlen Ness rear turn signals on his 2013 Victory Cross Country. Uh, never was a huge fan of the Victory uh, turn signals. They seem kind of like an afterthought on the bike design, and he felt similar, so... He's wanted to change them out for a long time. Now he changed out the fronts with a uh, a cheaper blinker that looks really good and super compact. But the rears, he wanted to convert them over to red. He never really, you know, because just in my opinion, I agree with him. I think the red looks better. Uh, these Arlen Nest turn signals are supposed to be super bright, so uh, he's looking to do that. And also, uh, we did the saber lights already. He also. Uh, he also uh, has gotten, uh, I, uh, I think he's going to get a triple play that's going to convert the turn signals to brake and running lights, which will just light up the whole back of the bike even more. And you guys know my stance, you know, is much light. I want, I want a lot of light in my back so a lot of people can see me, so I'm all for it. Uh, but yeah, like I said, he also, uh, he made these little finishing plates for the front turn signals um, to, uh, to, because there were still holes from the original, original mounting because of how compact the uh, turn signals that he bought was. So he actually used the old turn signal base as a template and he cut out a plastic finishing plate that he's uh, planning on putting on. I don't know if we're gonna get to that today or not, but I know we're gonna do the rear turn signals. He also bought a, uh, the top filler plate uh, from a guy online that, that encloses the entire rear tail light that looks really good. Um, so, like I said, he's done a lot of work to uh, the bike be, uh, this spring to get it ready for riding season. Um, and this is just going to be another one of those things that it's been it's been wanting to be done for a long time and just now starting to get around to doing it. Uh, we're going to remove the rear fender to get to the lights because his bike is an ABS uh, ABS bike, so. There's apparently a module under the fender that kind of blocks the rear tail light housing area. So just putting your hand up in there is not exactly easy. So we figure we're just gonna remove the entire rear fender. That way we have full access to do whatever we need to do there. Uh, the lights that we got are technically no longer plug and play for the Victory. Uh, one of the bad things about having Victory, I guess. Um, but he bought some waterproof uh, we're just going to cut the the we're just going to cut the connector on the lights and replace it with the stock connector. That way, it all plug and plays. You don't have to hack into the actual main harness or nothing, and it should work uh, pretty good, I would think. So, let's uh, let's get into it. My garage door, the garage is getting torn <laughs> down soon. But I haven't really cared about it. All right, guys. So we're going to actually do this install. First thing you want to do is remove the saddlebags. So on his uh, this is, is that standard the. No, these are the aftermarket. Uh, I think the standard ones were like a cotter pin, which honestly I would prefer. <laughs> but that's what was on the bike when I bought it. So. All right, so you take that off. There's the uh, disconnect that for the, uh, well, he has the Kiriakin lights. Well, not the Kiriakin ones, the Chinese knockoffs. You guys saw that video. And then the other thing I believe is for the Bluetooth the connector. Bluetooth, yeah, the Bluetooth connector. Ooh, I'm guessing that's good. What's up? No, no, I was just checking your tension on your belt. Uh, I don't know how much it's supposed to move. I, mean, I don't the know guy either. tensioned it when he put the wheel back on. Yeah. Those other zip ties. Okay, so we have this bolt. These are Allen heads, six millimeter. Yeah. So you have two of these, and then you have one, two, and three here. These look like 10 millimeters. So I'm gonna say take the actual mounting plate off, the saddlebag mounting plate off first. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's never been off. Yeah. 11 years right there. Hey, you know, I just noticed something. Those are 100% Arlen Nest exhaust tips. Uh, yeah, I would say that they are, yeah. <laughs> cool. I've never noticed that before. Those will be up for sale soon, guys. Yeah. He got some new, uh... Damn. 
That's unnerving. Yeah, that is, uh, that is, this, this has never been off the bike, I don't think. Oh, hi, pup. So as this comes off, guys, one thing you want to make sure you don't lose are these bushings here. This is what mounts the, uh, the rattle damper yeah. or whatever for your well it's what the that's what the actual if it's like mine that's what it actually locks onto yeah. so this i'm gonna say this has got to be a probably a 12 okay so this is a 13 millimeter i bet you these are tens yeah i think those are tens okay so we're gonna take that off I think gotta be careful when this one comes off because that the bracket will come loose then. Saddlebag bracket. We should have started by taking the seat off, eh? Hmm. I guess we could have started by taking the seat off. Yeah, we could have. But it'll be it'll be okay. That bolt does not look good. Yeah, it does not, does it? She never been off. And because of the antenna, we are just going to let this one. We're just going to let it hang. Oh, one of the bolts. Where'd it go? We're just going to let that one hang right there. Let's just take all these bolts out. <laughs> A little bit uh, rusty. Yeah. Like, oh man, they had some rocks set on those. Yeah. They did not want those coming off, which makes sense. All right. So that side's done. So I guess we'll do the other side and then uh, we'll take we the. Take... Oh, you're going to take all three of them off yeah. right now? Yeah. you have an extension? Uh, yeah, I do. I'll say get away from that paint. It's not the longest extension I've ever seen, but such is the story of my life. There you go. I knew this had to be hard on that, but it's nice to be confirmed on that. Yeah, I said it. I won't do this. Is without a doubt the big honker exhaust. You know what's really funny about it? At least when you get the new tips, it'll actually you'll be able to see it say victory and not just like Arlen S is tucked up under the bags. All right. All right, so there's that one. Now this one. I about say I would definitely take the seat off. So uh, I would almost do this first, guys, but you're going to want to remove your side panels and take your seat. Okay, so in order to take those off, you take the, the bag lids off, and then you just unscrew here and unscrew on the other side, and the seat comes off. We've yeah. done that. Basically, everything we're getting ready to do is a repeat of the other side. Yep. It's going to be hard to show anybody on this side, so. Yeah. Seat bolts. All right, so to take the seat off, you have to uh, scooch this is it back? You pull it forward. You pull it forward. Because Mine's the other way. You scooch right it back. It and, it and that comes off. Right on. Yeah, guys, be really careful when you pull these off. Don't lose those bushings if you got if you want to keep your backrest. Okay, so now just taking off the uh, other two bolts here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and say we should be able to lift this up and we should have access to the wiring pigtail back there. Hopefully. Which truck has made it look that simple? And I'll spray all this off with a hose. I just felt the fender pop loose. <laughs> definitely loose okay so we should be able to lift up here In theory. okay, okay. what there is that i'm not sure what that's for all right should i have access to the pigtail down there Yes, and that was it. And then this should theoretically just come off. I feel something else connected. Oh, this is uh, 
This is held on there with a plastic like, tree clamp or tree clip. And bam, Boom. that's how you take the fender off. Now, I want to know what that is for. What is that? Uh, who knows, man. Yeah, this is the ABS module back here. So that's why we couldn't just, uh, yeah. See my shoddy wiring job I did last year. Was this, is that from that? Yeah. Oh. All right. Alrighty then. Cool. So we have full access now to that. Oh, I would definitely spray oh, that off. I still have to take that off. Yeah. I still have to take that plastic part off. Okay. Yeah. Now I can do it over here, though. All right. Hey, guys, in case anybody knows, because I'm not the most uh, victory savvy guy, what is this for? What are these for? And what is this dummy plug? Two dummy plugs for? Like, could somebody please let me know what those are actually for? Just curious. Alrighty, so now we're taking out the assembly here. And that is what, 10 millimeter? 10 millimeter. Two 10 millimeter. So that's off. Does this got to come off here? This third one? Yes. Okay, that so. The only one I could actually get to when I did this the last time. The, the other ones took like an hour to get off. Hey, the foam still works good. I'll be right back. Undo your harnesses. Bought some dental picks and I can't find yeah, them. Yeah, I'm pretty positive that those are the exact same harnesses that I have on my, or connectors I have for my turn signals on my Indian. Yep. All right, so those are unplugged. Now we just got to take the whole assembly off. Now this is what I'm nervous about, is if it's going to rip that off when I do this. Should just be... There's a rubber seal under, under here that like kind of sticks to the... Stick to the bike. Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. Damn it. There we go. Maybe pull it up and down. There we go. Okay, I see. I see. I see. Okay guys, so if you have the finishing plate like we do, you wanna make sure that you Just try to pull that under. Took a bunch of paint off of that. Awesome. Alright, there we go. I'm gonna assume this would work to take your tail light off too. Just one right there. That's gonna nope. fall. Nothing else, put it on the porch. Well, we can go inside and wire. All right. Get some wiring. All right, guys, so this is your assembly, and on the inside here, you're gonna have five millimeter uh, Allen heads that hold the turn signals to the actual housing here oh. all right so that goes out through there does that have the same nubby on it that the uh, front ones did? Yep. Right, well, so they got to be the exact same turn signals. Okay, just feed that out through there. 
All right, so that is your stock light that we're going to be replacing with these, the Arlen Ness Shorty Lights. Much better. More gooder. All right, so we're going to have to cut this from this place. You're going to have to cut it anyway, so. This was Ryan's shatty uh, <laughs> wiring job last summer that didn't work. Very bad wiring job because I tried to do this with some just random Harley Davidson lights and yeah, it didn't it didn't work out. Oh, this does have three. This does have yeah, three wires. Or the Harley Davidson version. So, um, I guess my question is this: like, since we're gonna end up putting the the, the triple play on there, do we got to do anything with that wire? Those are the big deals. These are not trash. Trash! I'm gonna have to take these off. Junk! I don't have any dexterity with gloves on my hands. God. <laughs> okay, so this is basically what's gonna happen, guys. So Ryan is bound and determined he wants to turn his saber lights into turn signals, which is cool. That's fine. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna grab some additional wire, branch them off of this, and run them to the uh, wiring on those Kiriakin lights or those Chinese knockoff saber tooth lights. Okay, so he's eventually going to get a triple play, which is basically going to turn these lights, these Arlen S lights, into run, turn signal, and brake lights. This has an additional wire we don't currently need, but we're not going to cut it off. We're just going to tape it to the side in case we need it for the triple play. I don't know if we will or not. So. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. And then obviously wire these directly into the factory connectors. Okay, we're going to try to make sure these work. Uh, the turn signal don't work unless the bike is running, of course. Those aren't touching, are they? All right, they work. They look super bright, too. Okay, guys, so here's the issue. Which doctors is kind of wrong on um, their description of these? So, obviously, these are for a Harley Davidson. Now, I'm sure on the one, the direct bolt ons that they used to make for the Victory would work no problem, but here's the issue with the Harley. So, <laughs> when you look at the stock lights, that's what these were held on with these itty bitty little things, okay? Okay, those were the stock lights. This is what the uh the new one comes with is a stud okay so it comes with this long stud and a nut all right here's the problem when you look at this and this is made of metal by the way this is not plastic like i initially thought it was okay uh, let me see if i can angle it okay so on the stock ones this is your this is your stud and this is your wiring hole Okay, not a big deal. Or opposite, one of the two. Yeah, opposite. This is your stud, this is your wiring hole, and then this little bitty right thing right here has got a nub on there that holds it in place. Here's the problem. These are opposite. So the, 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 the thread going up does not line up here. Okay, so because now if it was like this, it wouldn't be a problem. But here's the problem. That's on the inside. It has to go this way. So you have to run the wires uh, into one of those three holes, and then this has got to plug in somehow, some way to make it work. So this will not work because if you go on the inside here, even if you were to drill this out inside here, inside here, uh, you're never going to be able to get a, uh, a nut on there. There's no way. So that was frustrating. So we kind of started thinking, why not just put something similar that we did here use the stock nut right that won't work because this is a different size on the stock headlights than what these lights are these are i believe 5 16 by 24 pitch and we got uh half inch studs okay that goes in with an allen key all right so this is going to have to go through you're going to have to drill out uh this so this can actually fit into this and we're going to put some loctite on it so this took the, this took a minute to figure out guys we didn't know if these lights were going to work so you're going to have some more involved uh stuff going on here but here's what we're going to do these weren't bad we got these at ace hardware for like 55 cents a piece 
okay? But this is what you're gonna have to do. What we're gonna try to do is bevel this out to where it's just wide enough to fit this, which shouldn't take much. Like I said, 5 16 really, maybe a hairpin more just so it fits in there. We're gonna do that and then we're gonna literally, uh, so this will line up, because you can't, the, the hole's on the far end of the, of the light, so it needs to be technically down here, but you'll never get it down here because of this issue here. You got this, this is what actually mounts flush up against the light, and you'll never get the space in here without messing this light up royally. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna drill this out to 5 16 uh, and then we're gonna basically bevel it down to here to where you'll have kind of an adjustment. So you can move this up, down, or a little bit more, however you wanna do it. That's what's gonna happen. Gonna have to take a break right now because he's got Easter dinner with his parents, but his dad's the one who's gonna actually help him do this. So we're gonna take a break. Like I said, I'm gonna come back over later and we're gonna finish this up hopefully. But we did test the light, obviously I just showed you that. The light does work. So before we did anything else, we wanted to make sure the light was gonna work. So that's what's going on right now. Can't do anything until we bevel this out a little bit. So, <sighs> nothing could be easy on this bike, I swear. But that's where we're at, guys. So, let's catch up with you in a bit. All right, guys. So, I'm back. And so, this is what we had to do. You had to drill. So, this is the little nub that held the old light in place. You just had to drill out a, was a 5 16 mm -hmm. hole to make the new bolt fit. We had, to, we had to make it down because the head of the bolt was hitting the top of this piece here on the right. inside. So, like I said, guys, that's pretty darn clean on both sides, I think. Uh, but this is what you got to do. It'll be covered up. We'll never be able to see this yeah. again. It's, it, this is what you got to do in order to make this fit right, though. I'm just going to add a, da a dab of Loctite. Dab will do you. A dab will do you. A little dab will do you. A little dab will do you. All right, so there you go, a little dab will do you. Make sure you run the wires through before you do this. Yep. <laughs> and then this should feed pretty darn close. Getting this screw started is the biggest pain because that the stud on the back of this that holds it to the bike. Not too bad. And there you go. That's what it's going to look like. Now we're going to do the other side. A dabble do you. It's going to be hard to get a good approach to it. Definitely the ball end Allen wrench is your best friend right here. That's set up pretty even. I'd say that looks pretty good. Pretty good. I forgot to take the plastic off of this one. Oh, well, that'll be all right. Take it off now, I guess. <laughs> Nice. All right, guys. So for this part here, this has nothing to do with the actual lights unless you want to, like, create the saber tooth lights or the Chinese knockoff uh, Kiriakin lights, however you want to call them. The saber tooth lights, if you want to turn those as well into turn signals as well. Now, if you don't care about brake lights on these, you have three wires that you can just wire up as a running light somewhere in the harness. Um, and then you'll have run lights and turn signals. But in order to turn this into a uh, run, brake, and turn, you're going to need uh, what I think they call it the triple play module to do that. And that's what Ryan's future endeavor is. Yeah, I'm to future proofing this right now. I'm eventually going to turn these into brake and running lights. Um, so what I'm gonna, what I'm planning on doing, is turning those those saber tooth lights we just put on into turn signals, 
and then wiring those into the triple play, which will then turn them back into to run, brake, and turn signals, in theory. In theory. Technically. In theory. So I am just wiring a jumper off. Pre-wiring. Yeah. Basically pre-wiring the, uh, the future... Uh, if you've never used these, these solder uh, heat shrink things before, these are so cool. Oh, I have to move that. That is way too hot. Wow. Which I realize. So basically what we did was like, we just uh, teed. We put the additional wiring that we're going to use into there as well as the uh, blue wire for the turn the new turn signals arlen has turn signals and basically what's going to happen is that is going to extend the wiring with the factory harness and that'll be the additional wiring for the the saber tooth lights yeah I'll show later you, when i get theory. it all done i'll show you guys what it looks like Those are really cool. Did the side of that? I can't tell. Yes, I can okay. see it. That is awesome. I could see that solder flowing on the first time you used them? I've never used one of those oh, before. Oh, dude, yeah, they're super cool. And that obviously had that little bit of solder in there. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I pulled on it before it dried. What you about to say? Put it back in, let it dry. Hmm. All right, guys, so we just did proof of concept here, and it does, in fact, work. We just plugged them into the bike real quick. So now what we're going to do is just put a giant heat shrink. As you can see real quick, this is how we did this. So we've plugged the two wires in here, made the jumper wire here, and that will get its own plug, which we have here, that will eventually go into the saber tooth lights. So we're just putting an extra thing of sheathing on there to protect it so it doesn't all right guys so basically this is the end of this we use these connectors and ryan spliced them in we put a heat shrink on them and now they're good to go and now we have a connector ready to go to replace those saber tooth bag light connectors eventually when he gets to the car. so now this whole thing is done we are going to do try to do a proof of concept though with those lights make sure they're going to do what they're supposed to do even though i will say the sheathing on this is nice yeah those are nice those are nice connection yeah not those bad price for no more than they cost all righty so now i guess let's uh put the other side on and now we can put these on back on the bike all right guys so this is where we're at now so we got all that wired up don't be like us and wiring those connections before you put this trim piece back on because you won't be able to get the wiring the the big plug through the hole so we had to cut those and we're going to do it now but we did it we went ahead and put this on now if you have this chop trim piece here this is going to be really tough because you got to like sneak this underneath where that that comes in we got it on there pretty good but still be careful but that looks way nicer let's say all right guys so we basically just got all this wiring redone now and we just zip tied everything up in a nice little bow right there with the connections back on there. And yeah, so what's left now is to just kind of run it onto the, uh, put it back on the bike. All right guys, we're putting the fender back on. After you line this up, you're gonna wanna make sure you plug that uh, plug back in and push that push pin back in place because that kind of holds that plate in place. Okay, okay. And just zip tying these to make it look nice. These are the additional Mm -hmm. wires for the saber tooth lights i'm gonna go ahead and say at that point dude you can probably go ahead and screw the fender back on yeah we can go ahead and completely reinstall the fender yeah did not line up goes in so whatever else that would be the whole fender to come backwards oh, 
All right, guys, there's definitely a little bit of flex in this fender, so I would highly recommend getting all four of these one, two, three, and four started before tightening any one thing up because we definitely had to move the fender around a little bit to get it back to where it needed to be at. All right, guys, so basically you want to start all these bolts and then tighten them up afterward because this there's definitely some flex that goes on on this, uh, Not this, one didn't do this fender. So we need this whole fender to come forward. Forward? Just like that. All right, guys, as you can see, they are working after we got the fender roll back installed, and they are bright as heck. I guarantee you this video is not doing it justice on how bright it is. But, all right, back now back onto the bags. All righty. We are back together now. Bags just going on reverse of what they were, and then bam. That looks so good. Cleans up the back end a lot. And like I said, when we finally get the triple play, these will become turn signals as well. All right, y'all, and that's basically it. Uh, that was installing the Arlen Ness uh, turn signals on the Victory Cross Country. Uh, a little bit of headache, but totally worth it. These things are stupid bright. Uh, the video does not do them justice. I'm just going to tell you that. In fact... They're so bright that my buddy Ryan's now like, damn, now I want them on the front. The amber's on the front. So, so yeah, like I said, guys, really worth it. A uh, little bit of headache to get through to get this to work the way we did. But in all honesty, I'm all I'm happy for him. Like I said, visibility is a super important thing to me on my bike, so it works great. But that's what you got to do, guys. This, unless you can find a set of the actual Victory-specific ones, which good luck with that. Which doctors doesn't have them or anything else. This is what you got to work with. Really not hard. The biggest headache of this is just drilling out the additional hole for the uh, the bolt to go in and actually having to go get a bolt. So, um, like I said, guys, you know me. Any questions you have or comments, please leave them down there. I get back to everybody I possibly can uh, in the comments section. And I'm going to keep bringing more videos to you guys. My bike's in paint. I'm sure there's other stuff we'll be doing to this and my bike throughout the summer. So those videos are going to be coming. Uh, and please consider subscribing if you haven't, guys. Until next video.